Hey, this is my unboxing and review of the Sony a6300. And when Sony announced this camera about a month ago, I was super pumped. I'm still excited about it. But uh, I've owned two a6000s, and this camera has everything that I'd wish that camera had. This is kind of the successor to it. Uh, not that the a6000 is a bad camera, but this now has 4K video, 1080p, 120 frames per second, a mic jack, magnesium alloy body with weather sealing, which is nice to have, this new 425 phase detect autofocus points. That's nuts. Like, I don't even know what camera will have that in the next five years, Canon. Shots fired. So this camera has a lot of features. Uh, 11 frames per second continuous shooting. 8 frames per second continuous uninterrupted shooting. So what that means is the shutter doesn't have as much lag and you can actually track your subject. Um, I'll probably go to the airport and shoot some planes and shoot. I'm not going to shoot some planes, that sounds terrible. I'm going to go and photograph planes and show how fast that actually works in the new focus system and see how it can track uh, planes taking off or landing. I don't know what one I'm going to do, but I'll go there and test that out. We've got S-Log2, S-Log3. So I'm going to show samples of that between the A7R2 and uh, the A6300. Um, I know the cameras are kind of in a different class. I mean, the A7R2 is three times the price, but they do have similar features. So I want to show off uh, the S-Log2. I want to show some low light between the two of them. I want to show autofocus between the two of them. I want to show autofocus with the meta bones between the two of them and just give you an idea of what it can do. Um, I'm not going to do too much comparisons on image quality because the A7R2 has a 42 megapixel sensor. And you can put it in crop mode, which I'll probably use to show uh, the video samples with, just because then you got the same focal plane. Um, but 42 megapixels is double this. This is 24 megapixels. Well, it's not double if you do the math, but it's technically double. And it's full frame. Um, I want to show rolling shutter. I want to show image stabilization in body with the A7R2 versus the A6300, because that's a big difference. And if you have the money, the in-body stabilization is amazing on lenses that don't have it, uh, especially with the Metabones adapter. So I'll show that, and uh, yeah, I'll shut up. I don't know what else I can say about this camera. 4D focus. This camera has 4D focus. Uh, what that is is it just takes its area that you're focusing on and now opens up a whole new little area of focus points. I don't know how it works, but it just kind of tracks that area that you're in, so it kind of just, I don't know, it works. I want to test that out. That's what I'm going to test out on the plane shots. Anyway, let's open this box up and see what's inside. Okay, so we have our documentation, our warranty card here. Thank you for your purchase. Uh, connection to your Wi-Fi smart device. Uh, Capture One. I don't know if this comes with Capture One. Uh, lens accessories. And of course the manual in English and in French. Inside we have the strap. That FW50 battery that all the Sony cameras come with. It's not very good. Uh, EVF cap and the uh, charge brick USB charge brick for the camera to charge the battery inside the camera. I'll post a link in the description of where you can get an actual charger for the battery. Uh, it's nice to have that instead of trying to charge it inside the camera. Okay, so there is the camera. Alright, so this is going to be a quick and dirty test with the A6300. Uh, I just have my iPhone behind it because I'm out in the field and I have no way to record out of the HDMI.
And as you can see, it has no problem focusing. Uh, it snaps onto everything really nice and quickly. So uh, let's see how the A7R2 does, same exact settings. All right, so comparing these two cameras, you can barely tell the difference. In good light, with the same lens, and the same settings, it seems to be equally just as fast. All right, so now let's do a quick and dirty test with the Metabones adapter and the Sigma 35 f1.4 uh, art lens. This is all I have to test on right now, but let's see how it does on the A6300. All right, not bad. Now let's see it on the A7R2. All right, so in that test, I'd say the A6300 is actually quite a bit better. It seemed to snap onto things where the A7R2 hesitated. All right, so as you can see, uh, the A6300 did pretty good with the Metabones adapter. It seemed to be a lot faster than the A7R2. I don't know why. I guess it's the new autofocus system, but that's really nice to see, especially if Canon users are wanting to use their old Canon lenses uh, with the Metabones. This is the Metabones 4, so you need the Metabones 4. Uh, there's a lot of other brands out there, but the Metabones 4 is probably the most reliable as far as I know. All right, so let's take this camera to the airport and see how well it does at tracking airplanes landing. All right, this is another quick and dirty test with my iPhone strapped to the back, and uh, I have no other way to show you how the autofocus points are connecting. Uh, here we have 11 frames per second. Um, unfortunately, I was shooting in a burst mode just because I couldn't track the plane because they're so dang fast. But you can see how well it does, and I'll run through all the images after. And I took 121 shots in this short little span of time. But the only shots that messed up were near the end when it focused on the fence, and I don't know if that's because a car drove in front of it or what, but you'll see that. And even when the plane goes in front of that lamp post, the camera still keeps the plane in focus, which is really nice. Alright, so now that you've seen how fast this thing can focus in good light, let's do it in low light. So I'm going to compare it with the A7R2 in low light, and we'll see how it does. You can see we have the exact same creative style, neutral, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2. And uh, that's how I like to shoot JPEG. I'm also going to be shooting RAW just to show you guys the samples at high ISOs on both of these cameras. So we have three things set up. We have a lens here, which is about a foot and a half away from me. This camera box, which is about four feet away from me. And then the espresso machine in the back there, it's about 13 feet away. So I'm going to jump between all these three things. Um, this is a low light situation. We just have one light overhead. The camera's at ISO 3200 f1.8. I'm using the Zeiss 55mm f1.8 as the lens, and uh, let's see what it can do. So this camera was noted at one of the best autofocus mirrorless cameras out right now. Uh, I think it won camera of the year or something in 2015. So it should be pretty good. Well, there it just missed the focus right there. Let's do one where we jump from the closest to the furthest and back again. So here we have the A6300, the exact same focus settings, the same camera settings, the same picture profile. Well, let's test it out. I personally wouldn't say it's crazy better. So both these cameras have high ISO noise reduction set to low in the JPEG processing and for some reason the A6300 looks a lot more mushy than the A7R2. I'm not sure why but they're both set to the exact same setting. Alright, not bad in low light. Now we've seen the focusing features and the capabilities against the A7R2 
it's pretty crazy considering that camera's uh, three times the price. So um, it's nice to see that. So let's check out some video samples now. Alright, that looks awesome. Now uh, I wanted to try some uh, face detection autofocus. Use the A7R2 and the A6300 at the exact same settings and I walked at the exact same speed and I went off camera and then back on camera. Not bad, now let's check out some autofocus in a really busy environment. And you can see that the A6300 holds up really well in the autofocus here. The image out of this camera is incredible, so let's try 1080p 120 frames per second and have some fun. I'll do some awesome ninja jumping here. Now I can tell that the image isn't quite as sharp. Uh, don't really get too hung up on that because I did upscale this to 4K because this video is in 4K. But from my samples in 1080p, they don't seem to be quite as sharp. Alright, so I don't want to spend a ton of time on this, but I just want to show you a couple of noise samples in low light at ISO 3200 and at ISO 6400. It's controlled pretty well, but the image is a little soft at 6400 ISO. Here's a few features that the A6300 doesn't have that the A7R2 does have, and that's in-body stabilization. So if you're going to be using a Canon lens here like I am with the Metabones, you can definitely see that the uh, shakiness is here with the A6300 handheld. And with the Metabones adapter and the Canon lens on the A7R2 with in-body stabilization turned on, you can definitely see how much smoother it is. So that's one option that's really nice to have if your lenses don't have image stabilization. While I was doing this test, I actually noticed how bad the rolling shutter was on the A6300. Now compared with the A7R2, it's equally just as bad. One thing I noticed, I was in crop mode here and it was pretty bad, but when I switched it over to full frame mode, it actually eliminated a lot of the rolling shutter. So that's something to keep in mind, uh, something I actually didn't even know. I thought that in Super 35 mode it was a lot better. Uh, that was a test that was done by Philip Bloom with the A7S back in the day and he said that with the Super 35 mode that it was actually less rolling shutter so that's a different case with the A7R2. In full frame mode it's actually better with less rolling shutter. Alright now that I've shown the camera and I've compared it with the A7R2 these are the things that I really like about this camera. I love the new autofocus system it holds up really well I mean in low light it's maybe a tidge bit better than the A7R2 but in good daylight they're almost you know, not much of a difference, but when it comes to tracking, the A6300 is a lot better than the A7R2. There's no way I could do that plain tracking shot. Um, that was awesome to see. And the fact that it barely missed any shots on that was incredible because that plane was flying super fast. And I was at F4. Uh, generally, you'd have your f-stop a lot higher to get more in focus, but I was at F4 and it held up really well. S-Log3. The image in S-Log3 gives you a lot of high dynamic range. That's something that the A6000 didn't have. And it's really awesome to see it out on the A6300, and I'm super impressed with how that looks. Uh, the image looks just as good as the A7R2. I don't have the A7S2 to compare it to, but I assume that it's probably very close to that. Uh, the build quality is awesome. It's a lot better than the A6000. I love that. It's a little bit heavier. It's a little bit thicker. Uh, it's got that new finish that I was talking about, and I'm super happy with that. The really high-res EVF, uh, that EVF is the best. I've tried 
a lot of mirrorless cameras now and this is definitely the best and when you set it to 120 frames per second it almost feels as if you're looking through an optical viewfinder I'm pretty impressed with that it's something I had to do a lot out in the sun because I couldn't really see the back of the screen too well especially when I was shooting an S-Log it was tough to really see what I was doing but with the EVF it looked awesome and one of the last things I'm really excited about with this camera is 120 frames per second uh, I mean it's it's not really a party trick it, it still looks pretty good it's it's not quite as good as 60 frames per second uh, as far as the sharpness is concerned but you could use it if you wanted to do some shots like that um, if you really wanted super slow motion drop a ton of money and get the phantom all right so right now you're hearing the onboard mic on the camera and I uh, just wanted to show you the difference between the onboard mic and with the mic plugged in so now I'm gonna plug the mic in and you can hear the difference in the audio so this is with the Rode video micro I think it's called anyway that's the mic I'm using right now and uh, it's off camera right now close to me on a, a stand but you can definitely tell the difference between a shotgun mic and the onboard audio but it's obviously a major improvement having that mic jack there that we didn't have on the a6000 and I'm pretty super pumped about that all right now this camera's awesome but it's not the wonder camera so there's a few things that I want to talk about that I didn't like uh, the first thing I don't like is no touch screen. Uh, touch to focus is really nice to have on a camera, but uh, so far Sony hasn't really offered that on any of their cameras, in the Alpha line at least, anyway. Uh, so no touch screen, no headphone jack. It's tough for me to tell if the audio is actually clipping or not. Uh, I just have to go by the audio meter, but uh, it's, I mean, it's not the end of the world. Uh, the A6000 didn't even have a mic input, so having no headphone jack isn't the worst thing but it is nice having the mic input but yeah one thing I don't like no headphone jack no IBS in body stabilization 5 axis uh, stabilization uh, having that on this camera would have been awesome but I can tell why they wanted to keep it smaller so not having that feature is not the end of the world but it's really nice to have on uh, the a7r2 especially while using a Metabones adapter with a lens that doesn't have image stabilization Battery life has never been good on any of these cameras with that battery, so don't expect uh, tons of improvement. It's not any better than the A6000 was. Actually, it might even be worse than the A6000 because the A6000 couldn't even shoot 4K video. So shooting 4K video with this battery, eh, it might get you about close to an hour of recording time. So it's not the best. Uh, rolling shutter is really bad on this camera. Uh, it's something... You know, a lot of mirrorless cameras aren't that great with, and actual DSLRs in general aren't that great with, but um, this camera seems to be particularly not the best with rolling shutter. So if you can, try to use a tripod. Try not to do a lot of whip pans. Maybe use it on a gimbal. That helps get rid of a lot of rolling shutter. So that's just something to keep your eyes on. Um, something I really noticed wasn't the best. All right, and the last thing I didn't like about it is how glary the screen is. Uh, when I was outdoors, I could barely tell what was on the back of that screen. It looked terrible. Uh, I had to use the EVF a lot, but luckily the EVF is nice, so that helps a bit. But comparing to the A7R2, I could barely tell what was on the back of the screen. And the A7R2, even though it's pretty glary, was actually a lot better. So they've got some kind of anti-glare coating on that screen. So maybe there's some kind of like screen protector you could put over it that was like anti-glare or something like that. But as it is right now, it's uh, super glary and really tough to view what you're looking at. Oh, and one more thing, the menu system's terrible. Just like the A7R2, the menu system's terrible on the A6300. Anyway, thanks for watching my unboxing and review of the A6300. I'm filming. Alright, so I was filming the end of the review here, and uh, the camera's in the sun a little bit here. And I was recording for about 20 minutes, and all of a sudden it just shut off on me. And I was like, what the heck? Anyway, let's see what happens when I turn this on. Sorry, I'm shooting this with my iPhone. But as you can see, there's like a temperature warning right here. And uh, yeah, so this camera does overheat when you're shooting 4K. Uh, I guess because maybe the camera's in the sun. I haven't done a test with uh, overheating yet, but my A7R2 used to do this after recording for about 30 minutes. But uh, yeah. So for anyone who's saying this camera doesn't overheat, if you're in the sun like this and you're filming for a little while in 4K, uh, it will overheat. So this is something just to let you know. There it is, internal temperature is too high. Alright, so I got out the manual and I turned it to page 39. 
and Sony even says it's going to overheat and that it can only record up to 20 minutes. Alright, so as you can tell, this camera can overheat and that's not something I was planning on reviewing because so far, pretty much everyone that I've seen that have reviewed the camera already has said that it doesn't overheat. So either they didn't test it in the sun or Sony's paying them a ton of money to not say anything about it. It does overheat, it can overheat, and if you're planning on using this for events or weddings or something where you need to record for a long time, or even outdoors, you might want to rethink it because, or at least until they update the firmware, because on my A7R2 uh, it was overheating and they updated the firmware and I haven't had the problem since, so maybe down the road in a couple months they'll fix that, but for now you gotta stick to short clips and uh, maybe keep it out of the sun, I, I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching my review of this camera. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty awesome camera for the price, and there's not a lot that can really touch it in that price range. It's got a lot of awesome features, and it's, uh, it can do a lot of stuff. It's got it all. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you dislike this video, thumbs down. If you disliked it, hit thumbs down twice so that it turns it not into a thumbs down. And uh, thanks for watching, and see you later.